Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to call this meeting of the Board of Aldermen to order. If you would stand and recite the pledge with us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, participation is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the board of aldermen this evening if so we'd ask you please to step up to the podium seeing no one i'll close public participation and i would ask you at this time to please silence your cell phones if you have not already done so moving on to the approval of the minutes for the Board of Aldermen, the regular meeting, January 21st of 2020. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion from Alderman Davidson with a second from Alderman Miller. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. The minutes of the Board of Aldermen regular meeting stand approved. Moving on to the agenda items. Um, the first item is the appointment for an Alderman for Ward 1. Um, I'll go ahead and take this. And I'd like to introduce you to Michael Zaring. He's gonna stand up right here. I wanna tell you what I know about this gentleman. Um, a lot of you know former Mayor Chuck Jones. Mike is uh, Chuck's son-in-law. And Mike is here with his wife, Julie, and his daughters, Peyton and Presley, and Landon Hearn. Interested friend of the family. Uh, what I wanna tell you about Mike is that Mike has lived in Harrisonville for 12 years, has a master's in business administration with an emphasis in public management, and he also has a bachelor of science degree in social science. He currently is a teacher for Harrisonville High School teaching at the Juvenile Justice Center. Um, Mike was in the Army for many years as an officer and has now returned to civilian life and feels that now he has time and commitment to serve the community. So I am going to make a motion that we appoint him to fill the vacant seat of the Ward 1 Alderman that was vacated by former Alderman Brad Bockelman. May I have a moment? A second, please. I second. That motion. So, <laughs> we'll let you be the first. Who's the second? Oh, second. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry, I would entertain I a motion. motion to accept that. I'll second. <laughs> Thank you. I have a motion from Alderman Milner with a second from Alderman Davidson to accept my appointment of Mike Zaring to fill the vacant seat of Alderman Ward 1. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Welcome, Alderman. I believe Randy Jones, our city clerk, is going to do the oath of office now. And you all are welcome to take pictures. You raise your right hand and after me. I state your name. I, Michael Zaring. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I possess all the qualifications. That I possess all the qualifications. Prescribed for the office of Alderman. Prescribed for the office of Alderman. Of the city of Harrisonville. Of the city of Harrisonville. And that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And of the state of Missouri. And the state of Missouri. The provisions of all laws. The provisions of all laws. Of this state. Of this state. Affecting cities of the fourth class. Affecting cities of the fourth class. And the ordinances of the city of Harrisonville. And the ordinances of the city of Harrisonville. That I will faithfully demean myself in the office. And I will faithfully demean myself in the office. Of Alderman Ward 1. Of Alderman Ward 1. For which I was appointed. For which I was appointed. On the third day of February 2020. On the third day of February 2020. Okay. Congratulations. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. 
Jacob. We'll give the new alderman a chance to get situated. I'm going to ask you to sit next to Alderman Milner tonight so you're not down there in the lower 40s sitting all there by yourself. <laughs> Okay, we'll move on then to Council Bill 003. A resolution of the Board of Aldermen authorizing the City Administrator to enter into an agreement with Zones for the purchase of 13 personal computers and four laptop computers and docking stations in the amount of $22,805.43 and establishing an effective date. Mr. Smith, Employee of the Year, I believe. Yeah. Congrats. Uh, I'm sorry. Just a leadership award. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Board. Um, this is our kind of normal housekeeping for purchases of PCs uh, for the year. Um, this is the, the bulk buy. Um, all the machines are expected the same for ease of maintenance. Um, we replace on a, a consistent cycle. Um, so this is just kind of normal housekeeping for the IT department. Do have any questions? Jeremy, I can't remember what cycle do we work on. Is it a three or five year? Uh, four year, actually. Four year. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion from Alderman Miller and a second from Alderman Davidson to approve Council Bill 003. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Council Bill 003 becomes resolution 003. <laughs> and now the public hearing for the special use permit. Mr. Pearl. Thank you. Make sure my items are always on the agenda when Jeremy has his items. <laughs> plan, Mr. Crow. The um, application is from 3001 Cantrell. Uh, the location is the proposed site here. It's between the um, Kirk and Reynolds and the uh, Welch silt fence uh, business just west of Milwaukee Mall. Uh, first, this location, as many of you know, was McCray Lumber. And then subsequently, it was uh, Water Products of Oklahoma and uh, HD, HD Supply, where they sold water pipe. The applicant is Anderson uh, Real Estate Properties. They own it. They have made application for a special use permit to operate a contractor yard. They are in competition for um, with a competition for a, a large engineering company in Kansas City, who has not announced its name yet. Uh, has cranes that they take out periodically on the large projects like power plants and so forth. And so Anderson, who's the owner of the property, has made application for the special use permit for this to be the home base for, um, for where they keep their cranes. They would also have some shipping containers, crane mats, 
Uh, I'll show you some examples that would base base Avenue. Uh, this is the main building. Um, some of the points that uh, we think make this a good location for the operation is uh, this is the view from uh, uh, from um, from the interstate. Um, this is the view southbound. This is the view northbound. You can see the site is fairly well screened from um, the main, from the from the interstate by the buildings on either on either side, and then also there are still at the uh, I don't know what you call them the shelters or the canopies that are behind behind the building that used to protect all the lumber that McRae had there for sale. Here's an example of uh, one of the cranes that's going out to a location. This one was is going to Florida and I think it's on site for about six months. Here's another one, another one. Uh, this shows, I've had this slide to show the crane, the crane mats that they sometimes put down when they have to be careful about what the, uh, what, what the cranes are driving on. And then this is the shipping container. In the C2, this is in the C2 zone. In the C2 zone, we allow one uh, accessory shipping container typically but in the special use permit we're setting this up because they want to have more shipping containers in the staff report you'll see that when we were at the planning commission level um, they were saying it'd be a maximum of 20 we've talked to them more about that they think the most that they would ever have there at one time would be 12 we can authorize that with a special use permit and I think with the um, uh, kind of protection or the shielding on three sides of this property. Uh, I don't think this, the ship the shipping containers will be will be a problem. Um, in our staff report that you have, we have eleven criteria that we use when we're evaluating uh, special use permits, like when we evaluate zonings. Um, we think that this application is compatible with. Uh, with the abutting properties. Um, we um, have had several conversations with our street superintendent, Rodney Jacobs. These will come in, in and out on flatbed trailers, pulled by, pulled by semis. The, um, I think the maximum crane, or the number of cranes they will have there right now is six, if they had them all there at the same time. Uh, most of the cranes are less than the regular allowable weights they do have a couple cranes that exceed those weights and lengths, and they have to get special permits. Uh, usually what happens is they have to show up with a flatbed that has more tires on it to spread, spread the weight. So Rodney does not have a problem, Rodney Jacobs does not have a problem with, with the weights. Uh, doesn't feel that it'll do damage to the roads. Uh, there was a question at the planning commission meeting about whether or not there would be congestion problems when these uh, are moving from uh, this location, across the bridge, on the 49, um, there is, uh, that happens very few times a year. Yes, they move fairly slow, but they don't anticipate that that would be a problem because, uh, like the example of the one crane that you saw going to Florida, you know, it just happens a couple times a year. Normal traffic on a day-to-day -day basis, there'll be three to four employees. Uh, they said they could double that to six. Uh, some visitors, deliveries. Uh, it will be a very low traffic location. When they are moving cranes to a power plant site or wherever, during those periods of time, there will be approximately eight trucks over 10 hours uh, leaving there with the different pieces of the crane and the crane mats and the uh, shipping containers loaded, loaded up. So anyway, we have staff recommended approval, the planning commission recommended approval, uh, subject to the stipulations that are in the report. We're setting this up as a 10 year special use permit. Uh, a couple of the special conditions is the shipping containers cannot be stacked on one another. The booms of the cranes when they're, uh, unless they're being used or worked on, can't be up in the air like they are as you drive from Belton into, into Grandview on some of those uh, man lifts. Um, again, staff recommends approval subject to the stipulations. The Planning Commission was unanimous in their recommendation. Uh, Andy Taylor, <coughs> Kessinger Hunter, 
is here representing the, uh, the property owner and uh, this is a public hearing item. Thank you, Mr. Crow. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address this matter with the board? <clears throat> Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Council Bill 004. An ordinance of the City of Harrisonville, Cass County, Missouri, granting a 10 year special use permit for Allen Anderson, Anderson Real Properties, LLC, property owner for a contractor yard for storage of cranes, crane mats, and 40 foot storage containers at 3001 Cantrail Road and establishing an effective date. Does the board have questions for Mr. Crow? Mr. Crow? Yes. I think you already touched on this, but the access to 49 northbound and southbound through that interchange, southbound probably wouldn't be that bad because they don't have to necessarily go through it. I can see an issue northbound um, to make the turns. Uh, they have to have pilot cars, obviously, and they'll get special or they'll get uh, permits from the state, uh, MoDOT, to be able to transport. Um, there's not going to be an issue going northbound making those terms with that with sp specifically the one the rest of them shouldn't be a problem well we're told not um the uh you know i've, I've gone over it a couple times with uh, our street superintendent and with as few times as that will happen a year uh he doesn't see a problem You don't, but you probably don't want to be late for work that day <laughs> when they're moving that, when they're moving the big crane. Yeah, unfortunately they can't do it in times when there would be low traffic a lot of times because of the fact they've only got certain times that they can move cranes. So. Yeah. They're not big enough cranes that they have to worry about the lines, the lights and all that. If they are oversized, Gary may know more about this than I do, but if they're oversized in terms of length, width, and weight, they have to have special permits and the additional signage and uh, car either leading them or following them. The height, though, I don't think there's going to be a problem. I think it's more, yeah. though, the length of this particular case and then the length that they would be permits to be able to do that. And MoDOT would ensure the, the travel that they're going, they would ensure that there's not going to be any issues with their height. And the pilot the car in front would also make sure that that wouldn't be an issue as well. That's what I was going to say. Mr. Crow, is the crane that we're discussing, is that the one that when we were in planning and zoning, we talked about it being taken apart and being carried on several different flatbeds? I am told that there, and this would be the example, I am told there are two, they have six cranes now, and, I, and this one weighs about 144,000 pounds. I put in the staff report the the um, the weight for most tractor trailer trucks is 80,000 pounds. After uh, Rodney saw the staff report, he says no in the Kansas City area. He says that's true in most of the state. Kansas City area, it's 120,000. No, commercial zone within the commercial zone. Okay, but anyway, there are two that are over that. There are the, like this one, then the 144,000. You know, I know this is one, obviously, to help the picture that's been taken apart and shipped out. And then you have other uh, low boys that will accompany it with the shipping container and I don't know what all other pieces. But uh, there's a couple of them that fall in that category. Any other questions for Mr. Crow? I'd entertain a motion. I make a motion to suspend the rule and uh, move this to the second reading. Second. I have a motion from Alderman Dickerson with a second from Alderman Miller to advance Council Bill 004 to its second reading. A roll call, please. Alderman Reese. Aye. Alderman Dickerson. Aye. Alderman Zaring. Aye. Alderman Dorhoff is absent. Alderman Miller. Aye. Alderman Turner? Aye. Alderman Wormwood? Aye. And Alderman Dickerson? Aye. Thank you. Second reading. An ordinance of the City of Harrisonville, Cass County, Missouri, granting a 10 year special use permit for Allen Anderson, Anderson Real Properties LLC property owner 
for a contractor yard for storage of cranes, crane mats, and 40 foot storage containers at 3001 Cantrell Road and establishing an effective date. Thank you, roll call. Alderman Davidson? Aye. Alderman Zaring? Aye. Alderman Reese? Aye. Alderman Miller? Aye. Alderman Turner? Aye. Alderman Milner? Aye. Alderman Dickerson? Aye. Alderman Dorhoff? is absent. Thank you, Council Bill 004 becomes Ordinance 3486. Alderman and Committee reports. I'll start with Alderman Turner. Uh, I was, went to the uh, Super Bowl party at the Back Event Center by Lumber Square. It was a great event. Not as many people have turned out as what said they would, but we had a great time. It was really nice. Glad that the we had a lot of sponsors the community to come together and help uh, support the square. Thank you, Alderman Davidson. Nothing. Thank you. Alderman Dickerson. I have nothing tonight. Thank you, Alderman Miller. Uh, I do have a question for Eric. Uh, where are we at on the flooding issue on the south end of town with DNR or the warning system we also talked about? We have had any new information on the warning system itself. Uh, we do have a meeting set up for uh, staff and uh, the mayor and some others, and then we'll have a public meeting after that with all of our findings that we have today. Is that this month? The in-house will be this month. The public one will probably be uh, March. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Alvin Reese? Yes, I was privileged to go to the uh, Chamber of Commerce Awards dinner the other night, along with, uh, there were several of us represented there, and it was an exciting thing to be able to see so many people there um, from all over. I think the most exciting thing to us, of course, was the fact that the awards themselves that were given to so many people were were. They weren't things that were just given out indiscriminately. These people had, had been, I, I probably don't need a little bit of help with this, but, but, uh, but to receive one of those awards was really quite an honor. And of course, we as a city are pretty proud of our people, and we are especially proud of Jeremy Smith. Jeremy, if you would stand up and just wave. He's a leadership award, and uh, he's earned it certainly. And the other award that we're so very proud of is uh, the Department of the Year was our police department. And we need a wave from, from Police Chief Hofer, this way, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these are things that are not easily attained, and they got them, and we're proud of them. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Melder? Um, I was with Judy, and I think Gary was there, Matt was there, a chamber dinner, right? right. Matt was there. I was trying to think who else I saw there. Um, what a great evening. Oh, we, uh, that was amazing. Decorations and everything about it was just wonderful. Um, it was so exciting to hear chamber numbers were, what is it, like 248 and another 48 new members this year? We, we got 30 new members last year. I mean, in, in 18 and in 2019, we got 48 new members. Yeah. So we're well over 250. Yes, that is very exciting. Um, it was a great evening. Food was amazing as always. And we got to, as a group, accept the award for um, 50 year members for the chamber, which was kind of cool. Gave a little speech from Judy and um, introduced Brad to everybody. So it was, it was a nice evening. Thank you. Alderman Zaring. I have nothing other than thank you all. It's an honor and a privilege to be here, and I look forward to working with everyone here. Thank you. It looks really good to see that seat occupied. Ooh. Report from Mr. Radler. Yes, it's good to be in my first meeting tonight. Um, some highlights uh, Public Works responded to uh, power outage in the uh, Metal Lark. Uh, area about 200 were without power for about an hour on the 24th of January. Uh, police department detective uh, Steve Nichols retired and his celebration was on the 24th. Uh, we thank Steve for his many years of service uh, to our community and uh, 
We also begin providing off uh, duty officers for security at the Eagle Creek Church and the Milwaukee Mall on Sunday mornings. Um, as with all off duty uh, security, the church will be paying for the officers directly that provide the, that service. Uh, EMS uh, responded to a structure fire that we had on the 600 block of Younger Drive on the 31st. Uh, there were there was no one home, so no one was injured, uh, but there were a couple of animals that didn't make it. Uh, and then uh, EMT class started on the uh, 6th of January. 11 students have enrolled for the class. Uh, last week, uh, finance staff were able to do uh, training with ENCODE, an uh, actual ENCODE trainer uh, here on site uh, to be able to provide that training, which is it's very vital for staff, especially the new staff and uh, the finance department. And then in uh, community development, uh, KCADC informed uh, us that Harrisonville is one of the 14 uh, communities in the metro uh, that was select selected for a commercial, uh, by a commercial real estate company for a 350 to 400,000 square foot uh, facility uh, to, come into, to come into Harrisonville. And uh, the other property or other communities were being considered uh, KCK, Kansas City, Missouri, Shawnee, Lawrence, Topeka, Leavenworth, Edgerton, Gardner, uh, Olathe, Belton, on the next up, and Bonner Springs. And they're also looking at other uh, metro, one other metro area, but will be one of the 14 communities that are competing uh, in the Kansas City metro. Uh, we, I've been going around uh, the city uh, visiting various many places haven't got everywhere yet but been to most places uh sitting down with department heads sitting down with uh, staff uh, going through a lot of the operations of the city uh i told the mayor tonight i'm excited for the opportunities that i see uh, for the city of harrisonville and uh hold on we're getting ready to go for a good ride that's it madam mayor thank you um, I have a couple of comments I'd like to share this evening. Um, I introduced um, Alderman Zaring as the son-in-law of former Mayor Chuck Jones, and uh, the mayor's family is here also. I wanted to share a thank you note that uh, the city received. You remember when Mayor Jones passed away, the city sent some flowers, and I wanted just to read you the thank you note that the family has sent to the Harrison Mill Board of Aldermen. It says, thank you very much for the flowers you sent for um, my dad. That was Chuck Jones' funeral. The flowers were beautiful, and we really appreciate your thoughtfulness. Thank you, the Zarings, the Jones, and the Smith family. So I wanted to share that with the board, Julie. Um, you know, it's it's very special, I think. We know how much Mayor Jones invested in the city of Harrisonville and how many of the years of his life and the years of um, Janine's life that um, he invested into the city. And I just think it's just such a testimony to that, to be able to have Mike here to kind of carry on that legacy for the city of Harrisonville. Um, I'm honored to have you part of this board. Thank you for being here. Um, I also want to just address Obi and say thank you so much for recognizing the city of Harrisonville with the 50-year membership award. I do regret that I wasn't here to celebrate with you, but you know uh, how we feel about our partnership with the Chamber and how important that is that the chamber and the business community and the city and the school district all be pulling together for the good of the city. So I wanna thank you for recognizing us and I want you just to know that we value the partnership that we have with the chamber. So thank you. I hope you'll deliver that message back to your chamber board. Yeah. Uh, questions from the media? I, just have I can't one for see you back there, Brad, but I know you're there. <laughs> I just have one for Roger. Do you know what the weight ratings are on the road and the bridge in that area? Um, let me get you the exact numbers okay. tomorrow. Okay, I'm just curious. So I think that's all I had. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other business for the board? I'll take a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. I have a motion from Alderman Dickerson with a second from Alderman Miller to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed?
Thank you. We're adjourned.